Hi there, I'm Ed Bannam Hall. In this video, I'm going to instruct you on how to examine a patient's cerebellum. And I'm going to do this with the help of my colleague and friend, Jeremy Dawson here, uh, who's helping me out today. He's got a normal cerebellum, and we're just going to demonstrate what that looks like while I explain what you should be looking for if in your PACES exam, you are directed to examine a patient's cerebellum. So, as always, the first thing to do is to start by washing your hands, which I'll do now. There we go. And introduce yourself, confirming with the patient that they don't have any pain or discomfort or anything sore. Hello there. My name's Ed Bannam Hall. Hello. Are you feeling comfortable at the moment? Yes, thank you. Anything hurting? No. If it does start to hurt at any point, just let me know. Okay. The key points of a cerebellar exam are best remembered using the mnemonic Danish. Okay. And this stands for, in order, dysdiadocokinesis ataxic gait, nystagmus, intention tremor, staccato speech, and hypotonia or hyporeflexia. Okay, I'm going to show you each of those things in turn now. Okay, now the key thing with the cerebellar exam is you might not want to do those in order. In particular, it's often best with the sequence of your exam to do the gait last. So we'll come to that a bit later. We're going to start off with dysdiadocokinesis though. This is a really easy test, which you can do very simply by asking the patient to play, place one palm upwards. Please do that. Take the other hand and repeatedly invert that hand on top. That's great. OK. Now, if it's OK, could you do that on the other side, please? As you can see, that was completely normal, no trouble for the patient at all. It's really important to remember with the cerebellum, unlike the rest of the cerebral cortex, that any problems in the cerebellum will occur on the same side as you elicit the abnormality. Okay, so they're ipsilateral to any lesion. Next, we're going to look for nystagmus. Okay, now this is something you may well see if instructed to examine the cerebellum. Now, the optimal way to examine for nystagmus is to have the patient sat opposite you, so you're facing each other directly. However, because the patient's on a couch, I'm just going to manage now uh, and ask Jeremy to turn his head towards me. That's perfect. OK, my preferred way of doing this is to hold the patient's head still with one hand. Jeremy, please could you look at my finger like this? That's great. Now, keeping your head still, I just want you to follow my finger with your eyes. When patients do have nystagmus, again, this is on the same side as the cerebellar lesion. What you see is the slow phase occurs away from the side of the lesion and a fast beat of the nystagmus occurs towards it. The next thing to examine for is the intention tremor. Okay, I've already examined for abnormalities with dysdiadocokinesis. On this occasion, I'm going to ask Jeremy to take one finger and just run it between his nose and my finger. So here we go. Jeremy, could you take your index finger of your right hand and touch your nose, please? Now touch my finger. Now touch your nose, touch my finger, and keep going as fast as you can. The key thing to look for here is that um, my finger should be at full arm's length away from Jeremy. Okay. In tension tremor, you should see Jeremy's finger struggling the, uh, to hone in on my finger the closer it gets to, to my finger. Okay, now if you could repeat that with your other hand, please, Jeremy. And again, we can see that this is normal. Thank you very much. The next thing to look for is staccato speech. Okay, and this is sometimes encountered in cerebellar diseases. So the best way to test for this is to ask your patient to repeat a couple of phrases which elicit this phenomenon most easily. The, my favoured phrases are baby hippopotamus and British constitution. Okay, so Jeremy, please say baby hippopotamus. Baby hippopotamus. And please say British constitution. A British constitution. Reassuringly, we can see that Jeremy has no staccato speech whatsoever. 
Finally, I'm going to finish up by examining his reflexes and then checking his gait, as I said before. So I'll just grab my tendon hammer. And very quickly, I'm going to check all of Jeremy's reflexes, simply because if you get asked to examine a cerebellum in the PACES exam, you'll likely really easily fit this within your six minutes for the examination. And you've got time to examine all the reflexes. So here we go. Okay. There we go, just straighten your leg out. There we go. Thank you. That's good. Jeremy, can you please take your socks off? Often at this point, it's worth briefly checking coordination in the lower limb. This is obviously a fairly crude test, but we can do this just by checking uh, Jeremy's ability to slide his uh, heel along his shin. So Jeremy, could you please take your heel here and put it on this knee and slide it down your shin? That's great. And if you could repeat it with the other leg, please. Thank you very much. I'm going to finish up by examining Jeremy's gait. Okay. Now, if you're feeling super confident in the exam, the best way to do this is actually get the patient down from the couch, stand back, and ask your examiners to escort the patient so you can ensure that he doesn't fall over. However, this does take some guts, so some people prefer simply to stand by the patient, making sure they don't fall over themselves. It depends on your preference. Jeremy, if it's okay, I'm going to ask you to step off the couch now. I'll just come around the other side and give you a hand. There we go. If you'd like to step down. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, next, I'll just ask you to walk up and down uh, the path. Jeremy, of course, has a normal gait, so I haven't bothered to film that for you. Uh, however, if you were to see an abnormality with someone with cerebellar disease, you'd be looking for an ataxic gait. So they might look as though they've got a slightly uh, drunken stagger, uh, to put it crudely. In addition, if you really want to maximize the sensitivity of your clinical tests, you can ask the patient to attempt to heel toe walk, uh, which may be slightly more sensitive. The final thing to have at the back of your mind is very occasionally patients with midline cerebellar lesions or cerebellar vermis lesions may have a truncal ataxia, uh, which may display somewhat differently to the uh, gait ataxia I described before. Finally, finish up by thanking your patient, assisting them to get comfortable again and uh, covering them up as required. Then you turn to the examiners and present whatever your findings may be. In the case of a cerebellar examination, particularly common pathology for an exam would include things like demyelination in younger patients, cerebellar vascular accidents in older patients, and finally, um, from time to time, patients with alcohol consumption will also demonstrate cerebellar signs. I'm just going to recap this for you so you get the uh, mnemonic down just perfectly, you need to remember Danish. So that's dysdiadocokinesis, ataxic gait, nystagmus, intention tremor, staccato speech, hyporeflexia and hypotonia. And finally, just remember, any lesions in the cerebellum are going to occur on the same side as those that you establish the signs are present.